you want to make sure you're at the right activity here here this is where you're at see it uh, information session for the international residential that will be holding this uh spring break okay and so i'm going to give you some of the details and we'll talk about and we'll answer questions and then we'll talk about alternatives we may have uh in in the works as well and i'll introduce you to some of the other folks so you would you like first though i'd like to introduce Maria, she is the director, Grendel, uh, Denise Grendel, right? Yes. And and and, uh, and she's the director of the. Uh, are you executive director or director? Director. Director of the undergraduate program. So many of you already probably know her. And Justin is the uh, Javier is the uh, associate director of the undergraduate program, and uh, and they help make this happen. And then. Uh, yeah, I won't introduce you right now because we, we'll come to that later. We'll come to, back to that later. But, um, and this doesn't seem to be going anywhere. So, it says it's on. I will, I will endeavor to get us out of here in less than an hour. So, if you've got study sessions or anything like that, as long as these work. So uh, I uh, I put this this uh, together this general trip and the general idea I put together back during COVID and one of the things we found out during that period of time was um, uh, uh, the students a lot of the students were really interested in going east to Europe rather than to the far east to Asia for uh, study opportunities and so we put this together the other thing is we couldn't at the time traveled to Asia because of COVID, but the, the restrictions opened up in Switzerland and we were following the same protocol and so forth. And so we were able to put it together. And so we started working with partner schools over there and it was, we were able to make it happen. And so we really built out a pretty, pretty neat program over there. And Justin, you can see here, he is the super TA for this particular program. And the idea behind this was that uh, the, Orange County actually is, um, and, and I, I talk about this in our pre-trip sessions, so I don't want to blow too much of my ammunition here now, but I wanted to tell you the reason why we picked Switzerland is because it seems like, oh boy, that's weird, you know, uh, it's not really weird because the characteristics of Orange County and Switzerland really are in incredibly uh, uh, close in many respects. The service industry, uh, in Orange County, you know who the biggest employer in Orange County is? Hmm? Disney. Disney, that's right. So it's the tourism and all the tourism industry that wraps around it and the service mindset that goes that 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 fits with Disney and the dis and the hotels and the restaurants and everything else, the tr tr transportation, the airlines and so forth. And that's actually one of the big characteristics of the country of Switzerland as well. And so their economy is driven a lot by service of mentality, as is the economy of Orange County. Another thing is the luxury, the luxury marketing. And luxury marketing is, you know, Switzerland is known for the watch industry. And uh, Orange County actually is built a lot of retail environment is built on the, the watch, on not just watches, but on luxury marketing. And so South Coast Plaza, Baxton Island, the spectrum, those were actually designed as tourist marketing locations, not just people who live here. And we talk about the numbers and the dollars that flow through Orange County. And then if you think about all those companies, and even if you go to work as an attorney, you're very likely to have clients that are either in the luxury or the service industry. The trade, we'll talk a lot about that. The idea of sustainability is important to not just Orange County, but the state of California, the country of the United States, and indeed the world. And we have elements of that in Switzerland where they're actually world leading in some respects with regard to sustainability. And there's some particular kinds of interesting uh, um, visits and talks that we have along those lines with regard to like public transportation and so forth on, the, on, on these visits. Okay, so there we go. So the session agenda for tonight, uh, I'm going to give you a course overview. We're going to talk briefly about the objectives of the course, general expectations, 
uh, 2025 sessions. So we hold 2025 sessions in the winter quarter preceding the the, the visits, okay? Preceding the visits, okay? And um, there are three of those. A tenant of itinerary, what to expect, city insight visits. Who are we doing this with? So we partner with another academic institution. And uh, and then um, we'll talk about the accommodations, the meals, what you can expect along the lines uh, as we're, as we're uh, taking the visits. And then we'll talk about some of the details, the commitment from you, the cost of the program, and then the next steps, should you be interested at the end of the session uh, uh, for you to, to, do, to join us on the trip. Okay. Uh, and so Justin's going to play this. This is one of our students who went a couple of years ago, and we put together this short video just to give you an idea of what one student's experience was like. <laughs> Here at Fall Rock School Business, we believe that whether a person is selling office supplies in our county or training Hong Kong Index Equity, students need to develop a basic understanding of factors leading to success in global business. During our week long program, Mirage undergraduates enjoy site visits of global corporations, NGOs, international sports federations, local firms with global clientele, and centuries old entrepreneurial ventures. We also network with students and faculty from around the world who are studying at our host institutions, and we enjoy unique cultural and personal enrichment activities. For me, having the opportunity to attend the international residential was life changing. I gained a much more clear understanding of how business operates in Switzerland and other parts of Europe or here in the United States. For instance, the way we were being greeted was a care and hospitality everywhere we went. This small gesture of forming a relationship and not just creating a transaction is something that I want to be able to provide for my future clients here in the United States. But just as importantly, I learned more about a culture I had never experienced before. Overall, I am extremely lucky to have had first-hand experience forming international relationships and further developing my networking skills in such a beautiful country. We also believe that the world is the best class for developing and growing a much needed global perspective in our students. And the international residential is one tool for accomplishing this objective. Okay, so that's just a little teaser. It's also something that I use when I, I share that with people because this program doesn't happen uh, by the, by the, simply by the fees that are, are paid by the students that go, you know, it's actually got other costs associated with it. And so I use that to, um, to actually raise money from uh, external donors. And we actually have some of our, some of our donors come in and talk to you. And in fact, last year, one of our donors joined us on the trip for uh, several days and, uh, and spent time visiting with students, providing her perspective. And she had, uh, an enormously successful internationally based career and it started with her uh, with her study abroad as a young person and, and building that desire and that and, and that appreciation for it so uh, the course is man one is it is it 195 now we got it officially approved so it's officially 195 which um, it used to be an end of, uh, it used to be a temporary number now it's officially part of the catalog. And I wasn't sure if that actually got done, but that's great. Four units of upper division credit. It satisfies your international business requirement. Uh, it has two phases to it. And I already hinted at this uh, a few minutes ago. Three mandatory three-hour sessions. Those typically turn into three to three and a half hour sessions because students stick around. If you've got to go, you've got to go. But if you want to stick around, I usually am there. We talk about details, we talk answer questions and so forth. But we have those sessions during winter quarter 2025. We have them in week two, week seven, and week 14, week 10, which is just the week before uh, a week, a little bit over a week before you actually travel. And so um, we, uh, we space these out uh, strategically for good reason. And I won't go into all those reasons, but it makes sense because you need to do certain things between each of those sessions, okay? 
It then the residential is March 23rd this year and uh, until March 30th. So that's Sunday, March 23rd until March 30th. My wife's birthday is on March 23rd. So as we did a couple years ago, you'll be, if you join us on the trip, you're going to be expected to sing in a video to my wife because that's the only way I can kind of get away with it. And it still doesn't help a lot, but we, we'll, we'll figure it out, right? But anyway, she's been gracious enough to allow me to continue to do this over her birthday. And, uh, and the cost has gone up this year, but this is, cost is $2,000 course fee. And then it's uh, plus airfare and incidentals. Okay, so that incidentals are the things that you choose to buy or meals that you choose to, uh, to purchase on your own outside of the meal plan, okay? And so uh, this, by the way, doesn't actually cover all the costs associated with with uh, putting this program on. So as you might guess, if you were to go and look on a, a, a tour company or something, uh, um, th that number of days with meals and lodging in Switzerland is going to cost you a lot more than $2,000. We, we actually are able to keep the cost down by bringing 30 plus people, but, uh, but anyway, we're, we're constrained because it's a course lab fee. Uh, at this point. And so we're coming up with the extra money out of some other accounts that, that I manage in, in the school and that Maria helps, helps us to, to manage and so forth. And uh, that, so the course objectives, that goes to the basics of the course. The, the objectives are, we expect you to uh, join us in site visits and professional presentations. We'll have professional presentations here as well as in Switzerland. Uh, we will have site visits in Switzerland, and we will have a prep sessions here uh, in, 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 uh, for those site visits. And I, I don't go into the details tonight, but uh, suffice it to say that you'll be ready when you get on site. You'll be ready to ask questions that need to be asked. And and you know some of these visits, like you might not be very interested in uh, Nespresso or Nestle. But you might be very interested in Gruyere cheese or the watch industry or the United Nations, and so you get to pick those kinds of things, and and those are the things that you help prep everybody else for. Okay, uh, you will develop an understanding of the global nature of local economies in Switzerland and other locations where the organizations we visit operate. So, for example, the UN, we get a briefing at the UN and the tour of the UN, they don't just talk about Switzerland. In fact, they don't talk about Switzerland at all at the UN. They talk about their global reach and their initiatives, sustainability initiatives, peace initiatives, those kinds of things. Uh, you will develop a, a broadened perspective of global business, governmental and nonprofit leaders uh, regarding issues such as markets, customers, operations. You can read this, logistics, finance economic systems, future projections. We talk about these things variously, different places. A lot of the conversations are driven by the questions that you as the students in the audience for these people uh, will ask those people. Like last year, uh, we had a pretty uh, extensive visit with the CEO of the Olympics. Okay, so the Olympic, the Global Olympic headquarters is in Lausanne. And so that CEO was there and he asked, answered questions, talked about the upcoming Olympics in Paris that were last summer. And he also hit on some of the Olympic opportunities and things that people might want to think about because we're bringing the Olympics to LA in 2028, 2028. And so this is, uh, this is kind of a cool, a, kind of a cool opportunity. And then we tour the Olympic Museum as well. And then uh, we want you to, we really, we, we just spend a lot of time trying to give you opportunity to develop a, a cultural perspective, a multicultural perspective. Now, I know that I look around here and I'm sure there's a lot of people from a lot of different places and a lot of different backgrounds, but even, even more so when you get to Europe and you're in Switzerland and we're at the school that we're at, they have like 30 or 40 different nationalities that at any given point in time that are stu stu students that are studying there. And we develop, we have uh, activities and interactions and you have the opportunity to have meals with those students to go to a local uh, watering hole, if you like. Uh, it's, a, it's on campus, it's 
very well controlled, but it's a nice place to hang out. We do just fun activities. We did karaoke. Justin was a karaoke star last year. He wasn't really a star, but but he but he led the crew. No, he was pretty good actually. <laughs> And uh, we really do have a truly international experience. It's a it's a fun time, but you develop your perspective. You really learn a lot. You learn a lot about other people, cultures, businesses, and yourself while you're on this trip. Okay, so okay, uh, we are still fleshing out the exact itinerary. One of the things you might guess is, you know, uh, we don't pick what day that the CEO of the International Olympic Committee is going to be available. He tells us what day that is. And it's a little early for us to ask him what day at the end of March he's going to be there. So we change the schedule as necessary to make the best kinds of things happen that we can. Nestle, we get a, view, a visit there. I don't know if you guys know, but the, um, the Palmerage School of Business is, is the Palmerage School of Business because Palmerage donated uh, tens of millions of dollars to the school. And he, uh, he actually became wealthy enough to do so by selling his business, his, he and his brother sold their business to Nestle in, back in the 90s. So we do visit Nestle. We may choose to visit a division of Nestle, Espresso. We certainly will visit uh, Kaye chocolate, which was bought by Nestle. That's actually where milk chocolate was invented. Uh, what year was it? Do you remember? Uh, come on, I don't know. Anyway, okay, I don't know. So, well, we, I, I, my my trusty helpers don't remember, but why don't I remember? I don't know. Uh, it was in the 1800s, though. Okay, but you have a lot of cows. You have a lot of grass. You have a lot of milk. You've got something right. I'm a marketing professor. You want to, you, and I think about them. What are you going to do with this excess supply of something? And they created milk chocolate. That's not just cheese that comes out of Switzerland, but milk chocolate was built there as well. Grading, uh, you uh, you will receive a grade, and uh, it's not an easy A. There are a lot of A's, but it's because the people who come on this trip really get into it and they really show me that what they've learned and so uh, our pre-trip uh, sessions participation is important uh, and there's some activities that you have to engage in you'll have to do some presentations one of the things our early trips told us is that the students didn't know each other well enough before they left so we make sure that we have some icebreakers during the beginning session and then we make sure we randomly assign people and with pretty truly random assign them to groups and then you learn about each other and then you develop presentations together and so then when you go you're not just like sitting there not knowing the other 30 people on the trip you know a, a good number of them and we've got a, a basic understanding of interests and, and, and personalities and so forth and then we get to know each other better on the trip of course and then uh, we also prepare questions so I ask you to prepare questions for the visit so we don't show up and We've got somebody who's an executive for a global uh, consumer goods packaging company. And uh, the, actually, the, the largest, actually, Nestle is the largest consumer goods package company in the, in the world. Unilever is the other competition. And uh, I don't want to be sitting there and not have any questions to ask, right? That doesn't look real good. We want to be prepared. And so that's one of the things we do. But then really the bulk of it is I want you, and I give you several tips on how to do it, is a learning journal write-up. And, and some people have chosen to do videos, but I have to tell you, I'm pretty, I, I, I really enjoy the videos that are done well, but there's some pretty bad videos too. So don't think I'm gonna do a video and get out of having to write a paper. And, uh, but you, this is not the kind of thing that you can actually plug into chat GPT either. You actually have to have been there and, 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 and learn and experience and share with me. And I spend a lot of time reading these and I really enjoy them. And it's one of the reasons I continue to do it because I really see that it's making a difference in people's lives to have taken this trip and to, and to think about it ahead of time, prepare, think about it ahead of time while you're there. And then when you get home to reflect and to write that down. So attendance, participation and cooperation among everyone are key. And I've got down at the bottom here, don't be late for the plane. 
bus, train, or gondola. I had shared with you a little bit ago that we have waved goodbye to some students. They didn't miss out entirely, but they were late to the activity. And that actually doesn't bear positively on any of us, but it certainly did bear positively on those individuals. And I hate using the word individuals, those people, right? Because individual, oh, I, I won't bore you with that. I'll bore you with that on the bus. Okay, three mandatory sessions. These are, I've already uh, indicated earlier. So if this doesn't work for you, um, it probably isn't going to be a good trip. There's no getting out of these sessions, right? We actually had people who were doing internship. Are they wrong? Are those wrong? No, no, instead of getting the 25 and now it's just number 23. What? <laughs> just the quarter, the quarter was correct. Yeah, well, okay. I, I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out. Nobody would have seen that otherwise. <laughs> uh, I certainly did when I went through this the last four times. Okay. Uh, okay. So we, I took pieces of different presentations put this together, but uh, we do have the dates, right? Okay, so it's winter quarter 2025. Um, we will discuss trip details and responsibilities. We're going to hear these perspectives. I've already shared with you about that. We're also going to share with you how to get ready to travel. Many of you probably haven't traveled internationally before. If you have, you haven't traveled. And I don't know if you noticed in the, in the short video, but people were dressed in business casual. It's, most of you are not dressed in a, in a way that would be appropriate for this trip. We, we dress in a way that 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 portrays uh, a, a group of business students traveling to learn about business, okay? So I'm not criticizing you tonight, but you can't show up like this there. Come, some of you are dressed pretty 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 ready, but maybe you came from work or you dress nicer on a day-to-day -day basis than most of us do, right? I don't dress this way at home all the time either, right? Or even, even when I come to the office. But when we're on the trip, we, we do that, okay? And um, then uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk also about uh, some of the background of Switzerland uh, and some of the background of the connections between Switzerland and Orange County. Uh, we will answer questions, and I, it's not just at these sessions. I I answer emails, I answer phone calls. Uh, you know, I answer. We we've got a a group chat that we start. Um, we get people ready. We give them advice on purchasing tickets. On, on, on any of the kind of travel kinds of things that are necessary to know and get people together in these groups. I don't think very many people travel solo to Switzerland unless they chose to do so. Nobody traveled solo who didn't want to travel solo, let's put it that way. There's always a group or a couple of people that say, hey, you know, let's get together and let's buy tickets together. And it works out really, really well that way, okay? And so then we also, I mentioned, we have an icebreaker. So this is where we're at. This is obviously, this is where we're at, in case you're wondering. I don't know if you guys are looking at the map lately. This is where we're going, right up here. And it's the center of Europe. So it really is the heart of Europe. And there's a, a lot of, of, of uh, um, a lot of culture there. There are four different uh, official languages. And English is spoken in most places, and English is not one of the official languages. Okay, so uh, it, it's uh, it's pretty multicultural within Switzerland, and this is the this is what we're looking at. So if you have wondered where it is, a lot of people when you tell me going to Switzerland, they say they think, "Oh, I'm going to up here," and that's Sweden. That's not Switzerland, right? But you know, not everybody's geography is great. And uh, uh, as I shared, we've got good reasons for going there. And not least of which, we have really strong partnerships. Some of the people who used to work here now work there. And people I've worked with for 25 years work there. And so some of the visits and some of the opportunities and some of the knowledge that we're able to glean from this are unique in the sense that that's where I have expertise. And I actually have a permanent visiting appointment at a university there as well. We won't go to that university, but uh, I have long-term relationships with a lot of people there. Um, uh, this is uh, the itinerary and the activities. These, like I say, this is still a work in progress, but pretty much everything that's on here will happen. It's just which day does it happen, except, and I can't stress this enough, I've been disappointed several times 
if the weather's crummy, we don't get to do this. So we don't get to go up there. Now we've had we've had some backup plans, but even there have been times where we've still got to go to the Alps, we still got to go to the snow, we still got to see a view of the Alps in the snow. But we also had days where we couldn't even take that because they shut everything down. And they were like, okay, let's take a let's take a ride across the lake and go to Evian, where Evian water comes from. Well, they even shut down the boats that were that were taking across the lake because of the weather. So that's actually something I should I should have started with, but just is that your safety is more important than getting all of these things. Okay, we're not gonna we're not gonna go. Okay, well we'll just go up just in case, and 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 we're gonna climb a big mountain or something like that. So, um, but we keep trying. We keep leaving this on there. But we've got we've got some backup plans always in in in, uh, in in our pocket, and nobody was disappointed with the trip. They were disappointed this piece of the trip didn't happen, but we had some fun. Otherwise, we did we had some learning on that day as well, and we put it toward the end because the later in the the later in the uh, week, the more likely you're going to get better weather. Okay. Um. So these are just a couple of pictures from uh, some of where we've been. This is our partner here, EHL. I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. Eco yeah, Hotelier La Zone. They're um, the oldest business and hospitality school in uh, in the world, actually. And uh, um, they have a great reputation. They have great connections. Uh, that's why we get a lot of great visits and lectures from people. This right here is the uh, the economic advisor to the ambassador of Switzerland, again the U.S. ambassador to Switzerland. He spent lunch with us and spoke with us, and it was in a five star hotel where we I don't know if we have a, a picture of it here. Maybe oh, is it right there? Yes. We were we were in, we toured that hotel, which is basically where all the uh, um, the uh, um, Dignitaries uh, and uh, foreign ministers and presidents and so forth. When they visit Switzerland, it's in Bern, in the capital of Switzerland. This is at the school. Uh, this is also one of the exercises in the school, and uh, this is in the the chamber of their Senate. And we actually had a personal tour from one of their senators or representatives in their capital, in the Capitol building. Uh, this is. Uh, this is, um, that's actually at the school. And then you can see just in the background a little bit, the Alps, they have a view of the Alps right out of the school. And so that's just a little taster of some of the things we did. This was actually, this is actually on the agenda now. Still, it's a five-star hotel that we visit there. Uh, and we go to the United Nations that is, is part of the plan. Uh, the um, parliament visit, it's not a visit, it's actually a visit. And uh, you would wonder what a visit is. I don't know, I missed that one. I, so. Only three of us looked at this, so it tells you. Uh, and the Hotel Bellevue Palace is, they actually, one of their graduates is the GM of that place. And he took us on a back of the house tour and explained their service mentality and so forth. And then we do uh, some other tours here. You can see um, we we only do one castle tour, but it's not just a castle tour. It actually is a strategic location, and uh, it was actually developed because of business purposes, because people couldn't go through this route without going through this spot. And so it was a place where they would collect taxes and business was done in this, in this region, and it all had to go through this spot. So you stop and think about that and how and how that and then the Gruyere cheese production, we go to the place where Gruyere cheese is made. And and if you buy Gruyere cheese at pavilions or Albertsons or something, or you have it on a on a quiche here in town, we go to where it was made. Okay. And people go, no, you can make it anywhere. Well, you actually can't. Real Gruyere is only made in Gruyere. And so we'll talk about that. Okay. Um there's a couple of other things. We actually have a cheese fondue. If uh, if you're lactose intolerant, um, people will get you some spaghetti or something. But um, and that's not a joke. That's true, right? But uh, we do make accommodations. But one of the things people have found is that allergies that they felt like they've had here 
they don't experience them there because their cows don't have any hormones. They don't use any pesticides. They don't, all the stuff, you know what I mean? Like gluten-free is not really a thing. There are gluten-free alternatives if that's, and all that's accommodated for at where we stay. But they found that a lot of it's probably because of the stuff that's in our, in our system here, not because of the actual gluten itself, it's because the stuff that goes with it. Then we'll learn about that on the trip. We won't force you to try it if you don't want it. I mean, there's people with serious allergies. We respect that, but I want you to think about that as we get ready to go. And then this is the original place where Kaye was made. That's Greer. That's the village of Greer. That's the Greer cheese factory. We saw them actually making it there that day. This is the little village. Uh, so that's and that was a group of students there. This is the fountain in Geneva, and this is uh, in Bern, and this is in Geneva. This is in front of the United Nations. This is uh, I don't know where that is. Where is that? Oh, that's the uh, inside. huh inside. inside the UN that was talking about the sustainability objectives, and this is another one out of the out of the Parliament. Oh, okay, wait on this that one. We also uh, we also have had a tour of the wine region. It's actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site where they don't use sulfites and they don't use. Uh, I mean, they count on natural means for keeping pests out of the out of the vineyards and so forth. And they and and they're they're what do you call it? The what what are the what do you call it in the soil? The microbes. Yeah, the microbes and stuff. I don't, anyway, anyway, you learn it. You learn it. I apparently didn't categorize it all, uh, but uh, it, it's interesting to see how they've been doing this for hundreds and hundreds of years. There, this is the headquarters of Nestle, right on Lake Geneva. Uh, this is one of the vintners, so he uh, gave a talk, and and then we had a tasting. And you're not forced if you don't enjoy alcohol. Or you're not interested in it you're not forced to drink any alcohol there's always alternatives and and some students avail themselves of those this is in the tour of nestle and and, and we see all the products that they make there and here's where we're uh dotting it up at nestle okay and these are some of our 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 hosts here that we're here and there's there's students from the host institution mixed in there as well the olympic museum uh, Lake Geneva, uh, just, you know, different. There's the school, that's where we stay. The dorms are along here. Uh, this is one of the classrooms at, at the school. And we had a lecture from somebody who actually was a consultant just like the last six Olympics before we went to visit the CEO. So we had a little more context uh, about the business of them. Um, that's the Chateau de Chillon I was talking about with the, the strategic location and uh, how you couldn't get through there without paying taxes. This is this was this is Glacier 3000. That's what we hope to do right there. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can just walk up there and look at it and say no, thank you, or you can go out there with your friends. But this is what we ended up doing last year because we we got weathered out. So you can imagine. If the weather's really bad and the winds are really high, nobody wants to be on that, right? Okay, but I really hope that it turns out to be a nice day. But we ended up in a nice chalet with uh, hot chocolate and uh, and a view. We got up there. This was the bad weather, and then the view it just blew off just long enough that we could all see the lake, and it was really kind of a good save. But you don't always get those, right? Okay, so we'll call our partner is EHL. I've already shared with you about them. They're right here in Lausanne. And they also have a they also have a, uh, a, a a campus up here and they also have a campus in Singapore. But we won't be going to Singapore or uh, the campus of Ice and Dome. Uh, but I already shared with you details about them. Uh, they're ranked number one consistently uh, for the last several years. They're actually accredited by the same accrediting body that the Mirage School is accredited by, it's the AACSB, you've probably seen the sign on the window, or if you haven't, look for it, that's what it is. Um, they're accredited by them as well. 
over 125 years. Started out as hospitality only. They uh, realized that hospitality actually is a mindset that carries through all business. And, uh, and so uh, a lot of big business people around the world are actually graduates of of uh, uh, Ecole Hotelier Lausanne. And, uh, and the, those connections are helpful to us as we plan these trips and and bring and, and be, uh, talk to people there. Um, let's see, did I say enough about that? That's their goal, yeah, to train young people to be responsible professional citizens and so forth. Um, and, and, you know, like most business schools, they have a, a, a noble objective stated and they do a pretty good job of, 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 of achieving that. Um, these are the rooms, the double rooms. So what you're included in this is a double room. This is a single room here because it was easier to take a picture of. A double room is just double that size, obviously, or a little bit, not quite double that size. But you have privacy. There's a, a divider kind of a thing, right? And um, we're all on the same floor. Last year, we were all on the same floor. It's a relatively new facility. It's probably the equivalent of like a two-star hotel in Switzerland, which is really a lot nicer than any two-star hotel you would experience in the United States. And it's very clean, uh, very, uh, very well laid out. Um, this is that bar I was telling you about. It's actually an old farmhouse that, uh, that they've turned into uh, just a gathering place. And it's not huge, but it's very nice. And it's a very fun place to meet their students and to interact with one another. They also have a full gym and they have a pool and you can use those facilities. They have game areas, they have ping pong, they have board games, those kinds of things, or whatever kinds of activities you want to do. This is actually the student uh, eating area, one of, one of them, okay? And these are the kinds of areas. And then there's a small shop where if you decide you don't want to go for a full dinner or a full meal, you can go in and buy some snacks or whatever and so forth. And then this is just a common area where you can study or, or hang out and, and just visit if your if your roommate doesn't want to doesn't want to, they want to go to sleep early or something like that. And you don't have to. You can pay extra. What it was it? How much extra was it last year? A hundred or hundred Swiss francs. Hundred Swiss francs per night. Not per night. Not per night. Not Swiss francs total. A hundred Swiss francs total for a single room. I can't guarantee that's the price this year. But it's not an exorbitant number, okay? So you can pay extra for that. Uh, okay, um, this is also a picture of the accommodation school and just, just a little bit more context around uh, uh, what, what you're going to see there, okay? So this is just the same thing you've already looked at. I'm kind of closing down here with what I'm talking about. Uh, so the, the details. We've already talked about the commitment, the three in-person sessions. What I wanted to say is, we did I say this already? We had students who actually had an internship in Washington, D.C. and elsewhere, and they flew back for these sessions. So we don't make exceptions. Like, it's important that you have internships. It's important that you have jobs. But these sessions are critical, right? If you don't make it to these sessions, you're not really going to. Uh, be, be successful in, in the, in the, as part of the group. So we want to make sure that if you've got a job, you can have three Friday mornings off. So you want to be planning for that. Um, the, uh, the travel from Lausanne to uh, it went, uh, from Lausanne to Gruyere, Barack Bavay, Blaise 2000, Geneva, other alternatives that we don't have listed here, smaller villages, other places. Uh, you know, the complete experience, the learning journal, I, I give you about three weeks after we get back to finish that learning journal. I don't want to give you too much time because you'll forget and you won't get it done, but I don't want you to have to come back and be jet lagged starting your spring classes and doing that at the same time. So, you know, I, I also encourage people to be taking notes or just saying things to their phone and recording it while you're on the trip so that you've got those thoughts then you can incorporate those, okay? And we have, I will say, I've seen some really cool videos. I've seen some really bad ones too. So I back to that grading thing. 
and, you know, I'm not going to flunk anybody on this, right? But typically, right, if you went and you participated, I haven't ever flunked anyone on it. But if some of these, some of these were really not impressive videos. And it was kind of like, hey, hell yeah, this is due tomorrow. All right, I'm going to talk to my phone here and then send it in, right? So we're not, we're not going for that, okay? So just please, hey, I, I want you to take this seriously because it's an exciting opportunity and I, I, I really want to see people get the most out of it. Um, I just to add one note. So if you're graduating in winter two, you're still <laughs> able to complete this course in winter quarter. Uh, so the grading system, the way it works is that you receive an incom incomplete grade at the end of the quarter. And then while you're turning in your learning journals, uh, it'll be graded in time to still be eligible to graduate in winter if you're a student that's graduating in winter. So it's a common question that we get. Can I still participate in this program if I'm graduating in winter? And the question is, the answer is yes, yeah. as long as you're meeting the, the learning journal deadlines that Professor Sangin for. Uh, and yeah. tell me that so that I can grade yours first and get it done and get the incomplete done for you, okay? And I've always, we've always managed to do that. It's always worked out, okay? Cost includes all the course related fees, lodging, most meals, not every meal. Okay, you're not going to go hungry every day you get breakfast and and most of the time we'll have box lunches or lunches on the road and some of the meals at the at the place. A lot of students chose not to eat at the the students who have extra money or money that they can afford to do it would choose to eat at restaurants in Lausanne or at the school. The school actually has a Michelin star restaurant. And if you were up for that, you want to book that before we leave because it's tough to get a table. But it's not cheap, okay? And so uh, flights are not included, but if you start shopping, uh, as soon as we find out who's, a, who's eligible, we had usually there's pretty, pretty really good uh, um, alternatives from LAX direct to Missouri. And, and then the train from Zurich down is not super expensive. But I mean, we're talking like for sure less than $1,000 to be. Yeah, I think a couple students found some at like low 400s, but then I think most most flights are probably like six to eight, depending yeah. on what yeah. your like layover. Some students are going to assemble for a day. Right. So it just depends on what you're willing to, to incorporate into your travel. And so and the other thing is, if you're, if you're um, financially constrained, we try our best to support at least 25% of the students um, uh, uh, with, uh, with we pay the cost of the program. We don't pay the airfare. We still have to do that, but, but uh, we, we fund this $2,000. We waive that. That's not called a scholarship because that would mess with your scholarship if you're, if you're on financial aid. But I just don't want you to look at that and go, oh, sheesh, I don't have $3,000 to spend. I, I won't even apply. I would encourage you to consider applying and make sure that you make your financial um, situation known to, to us and we select uh, and, and, and fund those students. And that's, but I mean, you have to truly be of need I mean, we, because we already are basically subsidizing. If, you, if, you're, if you're paying 2000 uh, already coming out of my account is about a thousand dollars per per head. That's kind of what one of the things that limits the number of students we can take on the trip because we just don't have unlimited money to to support these for everybody. But I didn't want this just to be a trip that only people who have money can join us on. So that's why um, we we do uh, come up with some financial support and like uh, some of the people who will speak to the group. Um, you'll have an opportunity to thank them in person because they'll come and share with us and some of them may visit us on the trip. And, and that's, uh, that's a pretty, uh, pretty important part of what we're doing here. Okay. Um, and I think, uh, could COVID, uh, we don't know what 2025 is going to hold, um, but we're prepared. They've had, They've, they've been through all this at this school. We've been through it here. We've been through it actually on our first trip. Justin wasn't there, but I was there. We had students back when, when you got diagnosed with COVID, you had to be quarantined. We had students quarantined. They're like, wow, this is actually better than living at home. This is great. You know, they had good meals delivered to them and everything. Because they didn't, you know, they weren't serious cases. But 
we do take it very seriously. And again, your safety and your health is, is critical. The other thing I would recommend, and I just thought of this today, I just got my flu shot today. We actually had several students toward the end of the trip last year, they got sick, they got the flu. And it's like, they still made it and good on them. I mean, they got up and got out everything, but it was a lot less fun. So I would consider, you know, if you are even thinking about joining or applying to join the trip, go get a flu shot because it will, it, it will be, it's cheap insurance and, it, and, it, and it's healthier for everybody else on the trip too. So unless you're an anti-vaxxer or something and then that's your, that's your choice. So, um, but, okay. And I, I don't say that pejoratively, I'm just saying that if you're not of that mind, do it, just don't put it off, okay? Because it's important for everybody. Next steps. Uh, this is where Justin's going to take over. Yes. So next steps. Um, if you're interested in participating, uh, there's a QR code in the upper right hand corner as well as a tiny URL. Uh, for those of you that are on Zoom or not able to attend, this is being recorded, so it'll be shared uh, with you all. Anyone that RSVP will also get a link uh, tomorrow morning uh, with information regarding this. Uh, but we asked to develop this interest form. This interest form includes uh, asking for information about you all as students. It has the free response answers. If you're interested in that cost offset that Professor Stangenberg had mentioned, there's a section to also request cost offset. Um, as Professor Stangenberg had also mentioned, it's for students that are of financial needs, so ask questions about your financial aid status, the aid for the ACI. It's just to help determine for the committee that reviews it, uh, kind of help determine what students are most deserving. Um, so the deadline to submit that is Friday, November 15th at noon. Uh, there's no benefit to submitting it. Yeah, there's no benefit to submitting it uh, tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. versus Friday the 15th at 11.59 a.m. It's the same consideration. It's not a rolling application. So I would encourage you to uh, take the time to really put into your free response answers and really explain why you're looking to go on the trip and what interests you and you have the chance to answer those. Um, if not, if selected, uh, just know that the commitment is asked for you all as students uh, the week following Thanksgiving. So the expectation is that uh, obviously the 15th is the deadline to submit. We hope to notify students that are selected on Monday, November 23rd, and then you have a week's time to let us know with your commitment if you would like to accept the offer that you were given. Uh, obviously it gives you time to go home, talk to your folks, talk to your family members, Think about the financial aspect. Uh, students that are selected for cost offset will also know at that time as well. So if you're not given the notification of cost offset, then unfortunately that means you would not be selected for it. Uh, so due to passport processing times, you should already have a passport. Uh, it can take months obviously to get that, and it should be good for six months after we return from the trip in uh, April or uh, March 30th. Uh, but if not, I encourage you to apply as soon as possible. You should be applying now for your passport. Uh, for students that maybe don't hold U.S.-based passports or you're on a student visa here, um, it'll be your responsibility to, if you need to get a visa uh, for Switzerland. Uh, but we do work with our risk management and our UCI Study Abroad Center to uh, help students kind of gather the documentation. So if it's the letter that you need from the home institution stating that you're visiting for that particular reason, we will support you in all that. But I know the Swiss consulate is in San Francisco, for example. And so if you need to go and get a visa, it's your responsibility to ensure that you set up a time with the Swiss consulate up in San Francisco to be able to obtain it. Um, we have had students, I think every year, except for maybe last, where we had them go and get those. Uh, but you'll work again with our study abroad office, our risk management team, uh, to ensure that you get those visas if necessary. And then course fees. So when you're assessed the lab fee, it'll come sometime during the winter quarter. So it doesn't affect uh, your fall tuition or your winter your winter fees. So December 15th, the $2,000 will not appear on there. It generally appears after the winter quarter begins, and I believe it gives you up until your spring uh, payment fees, which is March 15th, to pay them uh, in terms of the lab fee. And the last thing I would mention is that obviously, as you can see from, I think we had over 160 students RSVP to attend this information session today. The number of slots are still being determined, uh, but not, unfortunately not every student is selected. So what I would encourage you is when you're making your winter quarter schedules, because you'll obviously the schedule of classes comes out November 2nd, your enrollment times become available on November 11th. And so you'll be enrolling in classes before you have a decision on this course. 
I will encourage you to enroll in your winter classes as if you're not selected, if you can't guarantee it. Now, if you are selected, you'll be given course authorization and be able to add this course after the fact. But don't bank on relying on this course. If you still need an international business requirement, I believe we're offering 128 in winter, 144 in spring. You should be planning accordingly to be able to complete that requirement by the point of graduation. Obviously, this does it as well, but don't bang on this course because unfortunately we can't take every student that wants to go. Okay, and then that said, as Justin indicated, we are limited on the number of students that we can take on this trip. But because of the enormous demand, we're, we're making an effort to put together a, a similarly structured trip with the same partner, but it'll have a little bit different itinerary and a little different focus. And Professor Gerardo Opfiesen is here. And do you want to speak for a minute about this, your perspective here? You don't have to, you don't want to. <laughs> really? What? You're curious what I might say, right? Well, he's actually agreed that he's going to fund all 30 on his own. Him and him. So it, it'll be no problem. Uh, but uh, actually, he has relationships with Bocconi in Milan. And uh, um, um, and uh, as does EHL. So the CEO of EHL, years or 25 years of serving in Bocconi as a professor and a, an administrator. And so... Uh, we're able to put together. We're we're very optimistic that we're going to put together something here that that would would look similar to what we're doing. Only there'll be a bus trip in between, and because it's in uh, June, it would be the week after graduation. So it probably will be more geared toward juniors. It should actually be the week of commencement. So the commencement right. would actually overlap with your senior. You wouldn't be able to attend because it's on your day of commencement. So uh, most students I've talked to would not skip when they work two or four years to walk across the stage to be acknowledged. So you would not, a senior would not be eligible if you primarily were uh, juniors. Right, so if you're on Zoom, you didn't hear that. Uh, this is actually the week of commencement. So you would not be able to participate in this trip and walk through commencement. So um, it, it is really geared for, our, for today forward to be more to the people who are graduating after after this this coming june okay and so juniors would have a priority uh in this instance and they would also have the three why is this making so much noise they would also have the three friday sessions uh preceding the trip and the fee we're still working out with uh with our provider and with the uci so i wouldn't will be around for this trip if you are eligible and you are interested in the spring break trip. But if you're not selected for this trip and you're eligible, for, if you're not selected for the spring trip, there may still be another alternative that comes up. And so you want to keep your ears open for that. Is that, is that great? Okay. It's great. Yeah, it's great. Except for the parties, they, they're not going to pay for the whole thing. So that, that part's not great. Uh, but, uh, but I bet he buy everybody a, 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 a coffee in Milano. Okay, so questions, what do we got? Any questions that are burning? Yeah. Is it considered what? No, if you are, if, okay, so if you are a student who has, well, how did we, how did we, how did we word it last year? It's not, it's not, it's like if you're eligible and you say, and I'm also on financial aid, but if I don't get it, then we will contact you and say, we only had eight slots for financial and you didn't make the cut, but you still want to go, we would still give you the opportunity. But, yeah. yeah, there's there's a question on there that says like if I'm not selected for cost offset, could I still do I still want to go and would I still be able to come up the cost myself? Because again, uh, like the it comes to a committee and they don't necessarily know who is going to be selected at the end of the day. 
And so they'll let us know names of students that they feel are deserving. And, you know, obviously there's going to be more than likely eight to 10, to however many students are going to get a cost offset that are going to ask for it. So there is a question that states, even if you're not selected, would you still want to be considered for the trip and would you be able to fundraise yourself? So if you make the top 30 and you can't afford it and you simply can't afford it and you don't make the, the 10 or eight that are fully funded, then we'll go to number 31. But if you say, okay, I'm going to take out a student loan to make this happen, then you, you're still in the, you don't lose your spot. And I hope we don't have too many like that, but that's the reality of, of the situation. It's a good question. Yeah. Uh, so those three information sessions that are mandatory, um, do those happen once you're selected or do they happen before you're selected? Oh, those all happen. This, those all happen after we know who's registered. It, okay. Those are classes. They're actually oh. class sessions. Yeah. And we schedule them on Fridays because that's when most everybody has Friday morning open from classes on campus, at least senior for sure. In business. Other questions? No. But maybe we maybe we covered everything. I'll just answer one that I get every year. Um, if you've applied in the past, does it give you priority to getting selected this year? Unfortunately, no, because the new pool of students coming in, it'll be reviewed by an application. So if you applied as a junior last year for this trip, uh, it does not necessarily give you priority to being selected. I think today alone, we had 92 seniors that selected interest for this course. And so there are not 92 slots, unfortunately, available. So that's not necessarily a consideration for being priority for this coming year. There's a question right there. Um, is the seniority preference based off of units or year? So like, for example, if I'm a third year, but I'm graduating at the end of the year, does that affect anything? Or like, would I split that I'm a senior or a junior? That's something that we'll have to talk to the committee about. Um, but in general, I would say like a student that's been here four years and is not choosing to graduate early, uh, has kind of a lot of all the amount of time versus students that I know are graduating early uh, are selecting to cut their education a little bit shorter. But that's not to say that they won't be selected or considered. I think those are all uh, data points that are given to the committee to let them make the determination of who should be selected. And we should say we have had juniors join the trip in the past. Very few. We have had students in the situation you're describing join the trip. And so it's like, there's no one hard and fast rule, but what we do is we look at all the applications and we go, okay, you know, how, how can we, and, uh, how can we uh, um, make the decision, the best decision with a limited amount of resources that we have? How many of you have traveled abroad before? Oh, how, let me ask this. How many of you have never traveled abroad before? Good mix. Okay. Other questions? Uh, it's really fun. I mean, it's a super fun, very informative, a really good opportunity. I just wish I could say there's an opportunity for every one of you to come, but there just isn't at this point in time. Just to build this out to a second group in June is like pulling teeth, but I think we're going to be able to make it happen. We're really optimistic in that regard. But you know, it's a process that and it costs money and we have to make it happen over time. And um, and we only have so many resources and so many faculty available and, and so many dollars available to, to help make it happen. So, uh, you know, but our vision is to eventually be able to provide this opportunity for as many people as are interested. There was one more question, I think, and then. So uh, students who have fulfilled the international requirement, are they at a disadvantage? When time for this? The answer is no, because we don't discourage students from taking this from taking that requirement prior to going. We want students to be able to obviously still graduate on time. So whether you've met it or not met it, it doesn't sway necessarily uh, to you having an advantage to going. Because again, we want students to graduate on time, and we don't want students to be waiting for spring quarter to be their last class when it's one that's having to be filled. So if you've already met it, you're not at a bigger disadvantage than a student that has not met it. Okay. All right. Well, I think we did.